Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video, I am going to be unboxing and reviewing this Poco C65 that's just recently been released. So I've got this in the purple colour and we can see some further specs popping up on the bottom of the screen if you want to read those, just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with and what actually this phone is capable of. But we'll have a quick look at what's included. So we've got the SIM ejecting pin, USB-C charging cable, 10 watt charging brick and then your usual user guide and warranty information so let's just peel this off poco logo popping up there and this is everything that's included in the box so moving on to design and build we've got the 6.7 inch screen at the front on the right side we've got the power button slash fingerprint sensor and the volume rockers down the bottom we've got microphone usb-c charging port and speaker grill to the left side, we've just got the SIM trays and on the top, we have the headphone jack. Around the front, we've got the selfie camera, kind of metallic effect on the back of the phone with the camera layout, which is a three camera setup. You can hear the texture, it's like a glass on the top. So moving on to display. We've got a display that's capable of going up to 400 nits or 600 nits outside. Corner grid of last screen, 90 hertz refresh rate, and we can see dims quite low and brightness is 400 nits as I stated. And then if we quickly jump into the settings, we just have your usual stuff here, dark mode. Um, what else have we got? We have brightness level, so you can have adaptive brightness, sunlight mode, so that'll boost you up to 600 if you're outside, we have reading mode, which is in paper or classic, if you want to use that. And it's a bit easy on the eyes. And then your normal color schemes, vivid, saturated, and then your color hue. And then obviously you can pick a refresh rate. So I'm just going to stick this one to 90 hertz. And then additional settings are for your lock screen, double tap to wake, raise to wake, additional settings like that. Check out the viewing angles, slight shift in color temperature there and a bit of brightness, I think, but nothing out of the norm for a display at this price point. And then color reproduction. Again, what you would expect. We have wide wine level one on here. So full HD streaming and YouTube playback didn't work at 4K, just colors lags the whole video. So we'll just stick to 1080p if you want to smooth playback on YouTube. And obviously the chin at the bottom of the phone on the display, but again, that's, you know, standard. And then Netflix playback is again, full HD, wide one, level one. And then just an example of Rick and Morty here. Always has to be my example. Outside screen is absolutely fine. I could get direct sunlight, but good enough. So moving on to performance, we're working with the MediaTek Helio G85 processor, which is a 12 nanometer process. And then we have what they call memory extension, four gigabytes, six or eight. Benchmark 435 on Geekbench, and then work on 8918, 747 on Wildlife. What you would expect at this chip, it's not the best, it's an entry level chip. You're gonna have your little stutters and lags here. And apps take maybe a second to open. It's not the snappiest, but like I said, at this price point, this is what you'd be expecting. So jumping into gaming, I've got Call of Duty Mobile here. We'll go into the graphics and we can see medium is the highest we allowed and then high refresh rate. So we'll just bump it up to those and check out the gameplay. And within the limitations of the graphics settings, the game seemed to run fine. For long use, you might obviously start to notice some sort of stuttering or lagging, but that's obviously because of, you know, the phone heating up and stuff like that. Heavy load on the processor. And then Genshin Impact, I bumped everything up too high or very high so it was running quite heavy on the processor again i was playing for a while didn't come across any problems maybe a little bit of lag here and there and battery drain 
and slight heating of the foam. Moving on to speakers, there is nothing here that I found that will like give you additional speaker volume or anything. Just your usual kind of media slash sound settings and then sound effects. I guess you could change the equalizer, but we'll check out. For software and security, we're running on Mi UI version 14, which is running on top of Android 13. And yeah, it's just your run of the mill type of interface. I've done reviews on other Mi UI 14. I found on here the it looks kind of cluttered, and obviously you can pick the themes and change things like that. But I don't know, I just wasn't entirely satisfied. I couldn't see anything that would let me easily split screen and multitask. Uh, so I wasn't too sure, obviously, if you're going to have to go around digging in the settings, that's not ideal. But then for collection and sharing, you know, you have your normal stuff like casting to a screen. Uh, we also have, what do we have? Wireless display, so you can display to a telly, which my one is popping up there. You can change settings on your home screen. Loads of different options here. Not lacking in the customization department. Password and security, we have screen unlock, fingerprint unlock, face unlock, and then if you just pop in there, straightforward process of setting up your fingerprint. And you can add face unlock and works fine. Unlocks fast enough. Moving on to battery life, uh, Xiaomi claim you get 25 days of standby, 31 hours of calling, 23 hours of online video streaming, and 40, 114 hours of playback. So those are quite some bold claims. From my testing, it was probably on par with that, but obviously I've been using it as testing, so I've got heavy load gaming, downloading loads of apps, running benchmarks, and it seemed to be okay. I managed to get a day and a half and was still down to about 25%. Battery life actually depends on usage, so it varies, but still was quite impressed. Cameras, we just got your usual stuff here, video, photo, portrait, night, and then 50 megapixel. I did kind of prefer this layout where you kind of pull down to get the settings. So for your video, you got 1080p, 720, 30 frames per second was the highest you can choose. You have a two times lens zoom. For photo, you can have HDR, auto, and then a bunch of other things. You got macro, flash, all of the usual stuff. Portrait, you can change the aperture. And again, settings there, just your generic stuff. But we'll check out some footage and photos. So in conclusion, I have to say I wasn't expecting anything spectacular. 
I've reviewed so many of these phones at this price point and it is what it is. I mean, the processor could have been a bit better considering it cost £169 here in the UK. Maybe a Helio G99, but again, those are like marginal differences. In the budget entry level category, this is what your run of the mill budget phone would be. So if you just need it as a backup phone or, you know, just a phone that you can't really expect the highest features. Oh, well, I feel like most budget phones, are, they come with basically the same kind of specs, but the only difference really is the way the phone looks with these kind of glittery, shimmery effects that these manufacturers are trying to do. But nothing wrong with that. Still a decent phone for the price. Could have been improved in certain departments, but it is what it is. Anyhow, thanks for watching guys and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.